Imagine waking up tomorrow feeling completely different. Picture yourself starting the day with a smile, a heart full of joy, and a mind brimming with positivity. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it's not. This powerful morning practice inspired by the legendary Louise Hay has the potential to transform your entire life. It's simple, it's effective, and it's all about gratitude and self-love. Are you ready to discover how you can turn your mornings and your life around? Let's talk about gratitude. It's a word we hear often, but do we really understand its power? Gratitude isn't just about saying thank you when someone holds the door open for you. It's a state of mind, a way of looking at the world that can completely change how you experience life. When you start your day with gratitude, you're setting the tone for everything that follows. It's like putting on a pair of special glasses that help you see the good in every situation. Think about it. Have you ever had a day where everything seemed to go wrong? Maybe you woke up late, spilled coffee on your shirt, got stuck in traffic, and arrived at work feeling stressed and frustrated. Now imagine if you had started that same day by taking a moment to feel grateful. Grateful for the warm bed you woke up in, for the coffee that helps you start your day, for the car that gets you to work, and for the job that supports you. Suddenly, those little annoyances don't seem so bad anymore. That's the magic of gratitude. It doesn't change what happens to you, but it changes how you see what happens to you. And that makes all the difference in the world. When you approach life with gratitude, you start to notice more and more things to be grateful for. It's like you're training your brain to look for the good in every situation. And the more good you see, the happier you feel. But gratitude isn't just about feeling good. Research has shown that people who practice gratitude regularly experience a whole range of benefits. They tend to be more optimistic, less stressed, and even healthier. They sleep better, have stronger relationships, and are generally more satisfied with their lives. All from something as simple as taking a moment each day to appreciate what they have. So how can you start harnessing the power of gratitude in your own life? It's easier than you might think. You don't need any special equipment or skills. All you need is a few minutes each morning and a willingness to shift your perspective. Here's a simple gratitude exercise that can make a big difference in your day. When you wake up in the morning, before you even get out of bed, take a deep breath and think of three things you're grateful for. They don't have to be big things. In fact, sometimes it's the small, everyday things that can fill us with the most gratitude when we really stop to think about them. Maybe you're grateful for the soft pillow under your head or the warm sunlight streaming through your window. Perhaps you're thankful for the smell of coffee brewing in the kitchen or for the sound of birds singing outside. Or maybe you're grateful for the people in your life, your family, your friends, or even your pet who's always happy to see you. Take a moment to really feel that gratitude. Don't just think about these things in a surface level way. Really let yourself experience the feeling of appreciation. Notice how it feels in your body. Does your chest feel warm? Do you find yourself smiling? Let that feeling of gratitude fill you up. Now here's where the magic happens. As you go about your day, keep an eye out for more things to be grateful for. Maybe you notice how smoothly your car runs or how friendly the cashier at the store is. Perhaps you appreciate the taste of your lunch or the way your coworker always knows how to make you laugh. By actively looking for things to be grateful for, you're training your brain to focus on the positive aspects of your life. And don't worry if you find it difficult at first. Like any new habit, 
gratitude takes practice. Some days, you might struggle to think of even one thing you're grateful for. That's okay. On those days, try to appreciate the simplest things. The fact that you're breathing, that you have a roof over your head, that you have the ability to read these words. Remember, there's no such thing as a small gratitude. Every bit of appreciation counts. You might even want to keep a gratitude journal. Each night before bed, write down three things you were grateful for that day. Over time, you'll build up a wonderful record of all the good things in your life. And on tough days, you can look back through your journal and remind yourself of all the reasons you have to be thankful. The more you practice gratitude, the more natural it will become. You might find yourself spontaneously feeling grateful throughout the day, without even trying. And that's when you'll really start to notice a shift in your overall happiness and well-being. Remember, gratitude isn't about ignoring the negative aspects of life or pretending that everything is perfect. It's about choosing to focus on the good, even when things are tough. It's about finding the silver lining, the lesson, or the opportunity for growth in every situation. And when you can do that, you'll find that life becomes a much more joyful and rewarding experience. So tomorrow morning, why not give it a try? Start your day with gratitude and see how it changes your perspective. You might be surprised at how such a simple practice can have such a profound impact on your life. After all, as Louise Hay often said, it's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. By choosing thoughts of gratitude, you're choosing to change your life for the better. Now that we've explored the power of gratitude, let's dive into another crucial aspect of a fulfilling life, self-love. Self-love might sound like a fancy term, but it's actually quite simple. It's about treating yourself with the same kindness and respect that you would offer to a dear friend. It's about accepting yourself, flaws and all, and recognizing your own worth and value. Many of us find it easy to love others, to see their good qualities and forgive their mistakes. But when it comes to ourselves, we can be our own harshest critics. We focus on our flaws, replay our mistakes, and hold ourselves to impossibly high standards. This negative self-talk can wear us down over time, affecting our confidence, our relationships, and even our physical health. Self-love is the antidote to this negativity. When you love yourself, you start to see yourself through kinder eyes. You recognize that you're worthy of love and respect, not because you're perfect, but simply because you're you. You start to treat yourself with compassion, forgiveness, and understanding. But self-love isn't just about feeling good. It's the foundation for everything else in your life. When you love yourself, you're more likely to make choices that are good for you. You're more likely to pursue your dreams, to stand up for yourself, and to build healthy relationships with others. You're more resilient in the face of challenges because you know that your worth isn't determined by your achievements or what others think of you. Think about it this way. If you don't love and value yourself, how can you expect others to do so? Self-love sets the standard for how you allow others to treat you. It gives you the strength to walk away from situations and relationships that don't serve you, and to attract people and opportunities that align with your true worth. Moreover, when you love yourself, you have more love to give to others. It's like filling up your own cup first, so that you can pour from a place of abundance rather than scarcity. You're able to be more present, more generous, and more authentic in your relationships when you're not constantly seeking validation or approval from others. So how do we cultivate self-love? Like gratitude, it's a practice. 
It's something we need to consciously work on every day. And while it might feel uncomfortable or even selfish at first, remember that self-love is not about ego or narcissism. It's about recognizing your inherent worth as a human being and treating yourself with the respect and kindness you deserve. Louise Hay, a pioneer in the self-help movement, dedicated much of her life to teaching people how to love themselves. Her teachings have helped millions of people around the world to transform their lives through the power of positive thinking and self-love. One of Louise's most famous quotes is, you've been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. This simple yet profound statement encapsulates her approach to self-love. Louise believed that many of our problems stem from a lack of self-love and self-acceptance. She taught that by changing our thoughts and beliefs about ourselves, we could change our lives. Louise often spoke about the importance of positive affirmations. These are simple, positive statements that we repeat to ourselves to challenge and overcome negative self-talk. For example, instead of thinking, I'm not good enough, you might affirm, I am worthy of love and respect. Or instead of, I always mess things up, you could say, I am capable of handling whatever comes my way. At first, these affirmations might feel false or uncomfortable, that's normal. Remember, you're challenging beliefs that you might have held for years or even decades, but Louise encouraged people to persist, saying, it's only a thought and a thought can be changed. Over time, as you repeat these positive affirmations, they start to sink in. They begin to replace the old negative beliefs, reshaping your self-image and boosting your self-esteem. Another key teaching of Louise Hay was the connection between our thoughts and our physical health. She believed that negative thoughts and emotions could manifest as physical ailments in our bodies. While this idea might seem far-fetched to some, there's growing scientific evidence supporting the link between our mental state and our physical health. Louise encouraged people to listen to their bodies and to approach health holistically, addressing not just physical symptoms, but also emotional and mental well-being. She believed in the body's innate ability to heal itself when given the right support, including positive thoughts and self-love. One of Louise's most powerful tools for cultivating self-love was what she called mirror work. This involves looking at yourself in the mirror and saying positive affirmations or simply words of love and encouragement to yourself. It might sound simple, but for many people, it's surprisingly challenging. We're often our own worst critics, and looking ourselves in the eye and speaking words of love can feel uncomfortable or even embarrassing at first but that's precisely why it's so powerful. Mirror work forces us to confront our self-image head on. It challenges us to see ourselves with love and compassion rather than criticism. And over time, it can dramatically shift how we perceive and treat ourselves. Let's try a simple mirror work exercise right now. Don't worry, you don't need to do anything complicated. Just find a mirror it can be a small hand mirror, your bathroom mirror, or even the front-facing camera on your phone. Take a deep breath and look at yourself in the mirror. Really look into your own eyes. What do you see? Do you immediately start criticizing your appearance, or do you see the unique, valuable person that you are? Now try saying to yourself, I love and accept you just as you are. Say it out loud if you can. Notice how it feels. Does it feel true? Does it feel uncomfortable? Whatever you feel, it's okay. Just notice your reaction without judgment. If I love you feels too big right now, start with something simpler. 
You could say, I'm learning to love and accept myself, or I'm worthy of love and respect. Choose an affirmation that feels right for you, even if it doesn't feel completely true yet. Repeat your chosen affirmation a few times, always looking into your own eyes. Try to say it with feeling, as if you're speaking to a dear friend who needs encouragement. Because in a way, you are. You're speaking to the part of yourself that needs love and acceptance. This exercise might feel awkward or even silly at first. You might find yourself feeling emotional or you might feel nothing at all. All of these reactions are normal. The important thing is to keep practicing. Try doing this mirror work for a few minutes each morning as part of your routine. Over time, you might notice that it becomes easier to look at yourself with kindness. You might find the affirmations feeling more true, more natural. You might even start to see changes in how you carry yourself and interact with others. Remember, self-love is a journey, not a destination. There will be days when it's easier and days when it's harder. But with consistent practice, you can build a stronger, more loving relationship with yourself. And that relationship is the foundation for everything else in your life. Louise Hay often said, you have been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. This mirror work is a practical way to start approving of yourself, to start treating yourself with the love and respect you deserve. As you continue this practice, you might want to expand on it. You could write down your affirmations and stick them on your mirror as reminders. You could take a few minutes after your mirror work to journal about your feelings and experiences. Or you could combine it with your gratitude practice, expressing gratitude for specific things about yourself. The key is to make it a regular part of your routine. Just like brushing your teeth or eating breakfast, make self-love a non-negotiable part of your day. It might feel strange at first, but over time, it will become as natural as any other habit. And as you cultivate this self-love, you'll likely notice changes in other areas of your life. You might find yourself setting healthier boundaries in relationships, pursuing goals you've always dreamed of, or simply feeling more at peace with yourself and the world around you. That's the transformative power of self-love. Now that we've explored gratitude and self-love separately, let's bring them together. These two practices are like two sides of the same coin, each enhancing the other. When you combine gratitude and self-love, you create a powerful force for positive change in your life. Think about it this way. Gratitude opens your eyes to the good things in your life while self-love helps you recognize that you deserve those good things. Gratitude helps you appreciate what you have, while self-love encourages you to believe you're worthy of even more goodness. Here's a simple way to practice both together. Each morning, start with your gratitude exercise, thinking of three things you're thankful for. Then, look in the mirror and express gratitude for yourself. You might say something like, I'm grateful for my kind heart, or I'm thankful for my resilience. This combines the outward focus of gratitude with the inward focus of self-love. As you go through your day, try to notice things you're grateful for about yourself. Maybe you're thankful for your sense of humor that brightens a tough meeting, or for your patience when dealing with a difficult situation. By focusing on gratitude for your own qualities and actions, you're reinforcing your self-love. Remember, both gratitude and self-love are skills that improve with practice. Some days will be easier than others, but the key is consistency. 
even on days when you're struggling, try to find just one thing to be grateful for and one thing to love about yourself. Over time, you'll find it becomes easier and more natural. Let's be honest. Developing a gratitude and self-love practice isn't always easy. You might face days when you struggle to think of anything to be grateful for, or when looking in the mirror feels too difficult. These challenges are normal and part of the journey. One common struggle is feeling like you're being selfish or narcissistic by focusing on self-love. Remember, true self-love isn't about thinking you're better than others. It's about recognizing your own worth, which actually allows you to treat others with more kindness and respect. Another challenge might be consistency. Life gets busy, and it's easy to let your practice slip. To overcome this, try linking your gratitude and self-love exercises to something you already do every day, like brushing your teeth or having your morning coffee. This helps make it a habit. You might also face skepticism, either from yourself or others. You might think, this is too simple to make a real difference. But remember, it's the simple things, done consistently, that often have the biggest impact. Give it time, and you'll likely start noticing positive changes in your life. If you're having a particularly tough day, be gentle with yourself. Maybe your gratitude for the day is simply, I'm grateful I made it through this day. That's okay. Self-love means accepting yourself on the hard days, too. Affirmations are a powerful tool for reinforcing both gratitude and self-love. These are positive statements that you repeat to yourself, helping to reshape your thoughts and beliefs. Here are a few simple affirmations you might try. I am grateful for this new day and all the opportunities it brings. I love and accept myself exactly as I am. I am worthy of love, respect, and good things in my life. I choose to focus on the positives in my life. I am becoming the best version of myself every day. Try saying these affirmations out loud each morning or write them down in a journal. You might even want to post them somewhere you'll see them often, like on your bathroom mirror or as a reminder on your phone. Remember, the key with affirmations is repetition and belief. At first, they might feel untrue or uncomfortable. That's okay. Keep repeating them anyway. Over time, you'll likely find that they start to feel more natural and true. You can also create your own affirmations based on areas where you want to cultivate more gratitude or self-love. For example, if you often criticize your appearance, you might use an affirmation like, I am grateful for my body and all it does for me. As we wrap up, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've covered. We've explored the transformative power of gratitude, learning how it can shift our perspective and open our eyes to the good in our lives. We've delved into the importance of self-love, understanding how it forms the foundation for a happy, fulfilling life. We've learned practical exercises for cultivating both gratitude and self-love, from simple morning gratitude practices to Louise Hay's powerful mirror work. We've discovered how combining these practices can create a potent force for positive change in our lives. Remember, this journey to a more positive, loving relationship with yourself and the world around you is just that, a journey. It's not about perfection, but about progress. Some days will be easier than others, and that's okay. The key is to keep showing up for yourself, day after day, with patience and compassion. As you move forward, keep in mind that small, consistent actions can lead to big changes over time. 
that moment of gratitude in the morning, that kind word to yourself in the mirror. These might seem insignificant, but they're laying the foundation for a more positive, fulfilling life. So why not start right now? Take a deep breath. Think of one thing you're grateful for and give yourself one compliment. That's all it takes to begin. From this moment on, you have the power to transform your life through gratitude and self-love. Remember the words of Louise Hay. You have been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. Your journey to a more positive, loving life starts now. Embrace it with an open heart and watch as your world transforms, one grateful, loving thought at a time.